All right, so we have created our VPC module and we've updated it in our most recent video so that it has some gateways, right? A NAT gateway, an internet gateway, and the routes that are associated with the correct subnets. So the public subnets have an internet gateway, the private subnets have a NAT gateway. And next we need to actually make use of this. Our EC2 modules right now do not specify a VPC to be added into. And of course, along with that, we also do not specify any subnets for these EC2 servers to be inside of. That means that these are going to be randomly assigned to a subnet inside of the default VPC inside of our US East 2 region. We want our EC2 modules to be able to be told what VPC to add the servers into in addition to the subnets within that VPC. So we need to update our EC2 module to do just that. So first things first, let's update our EC2 module. We are going to have our EC2 module ask in air quotes what VPC and subnets and actually security groups, which we'll see a little later, um, to add the servers it creates into. So we're going to go into our variables file here and define some new variables. I'll define two new ones. The first one will be subnets. Okay, so specifically, I'm not creating a variable for VPC. I'm not saying specifically this is the VPC to add the server into. Instead, we're just going to give it the subnets, and a subnet can only be part of a single VPC, so it infers the correct VPC to add the server into just by nature of us telling it what subnet to create the server in. We can give this, in this case, a list of strings. So we're not actually going to say which specific subnet to add the server into. I'm going to do something a little funkier and just say these are all the subnets you can add the server into, and you pick one. You could be very explicit and just say no, use this subnet, but I'm not going to do that in this case. This will show you a few more tricks in Terraform to use. And then another variable for security groups. This is going to be a list of strings as well. The default here is going to be an empty list. So we actually don't need to tell it to add the server into any specific security groups if we don't want to. Let's just start with the subnets. That'll be the more interesting part of this video. So those are two new variables for our EC2 module. Let's go ahead and see how to use those. Okay, I'll close these both. I'm going to go into the main file in our EC2 module. Reduce this a little bit. And what we need to do is add a few things into our AWS instance resource. I'm going to add it under the root block device area, and we're going to add two things. One, the subnet ID, and we're going to have to figure out which subnet to add the server to. And then we can do VPC security group IDs, and that will just go right into the bar.security groups variable which by default is just the empty list here. So we can actually give this an empty list if we want to, but I'll keep it bar.securitygroups, which of course defaults to the empty list, or we could just give it a list of security groups to add the server into when we define our EC2 module. Okay, so the more interesting part here, how do we decide what subnet to add this into, right? Because what we gave this for a variable is going to be a list of strings, a list of subnets to add to. What we want in this case, or what I've decided that I want to do in this case, is to give our module a list of subnets that it might add the server into, and I'm going to have the module randomly decide which subnet to add it into. And we can do that in kind of an interesting way. We're going to use a new resource here, and that resource is actually called random shuffle. See, we have a few randoms here, id, integer, password, pet, shuffle, we're going to use. I'm just going to call this subnets, and we can do a few things here. Um, we're going to define an input. The input is going to be the var.subnets variable. So our list of strings, our list of possible subnets is the input to the random shuffle. And then random shuffle will give you one or more random items from a list. And I want just one. So I'm going to say, give me one random item from our list of subnets. So give me one uh, random subnet. And then down here for subnet ID, we can say, give me the random shuffle from our random shuffle resource the one we called subnets, give me the first result. We know there's only going to be one result because we said result count one, and we just give it the array access with the index of zero because we know, of course, the index will be zero for the one result that gives back. So this is interesting because random shuffle is actually a resource. It's kind of a hack that is added in along with some other specific resources, and it's just some extra tools that Terraform gives us. If we head over to my browser in Safari, I have the docs up for random shuffle. It's basically just an input, and you can see it's just a list of strings here. It's a very similar use case to what we just did, and the result count here is two, but I just wanted one in my case. Okay, so we have that updated in our EC2 module. Let's go ahead and see how that looks here. So I have two 
instances of this EC2 module being used, one for workers and one for our application servers, the web servers. We have two new variables each here. One is going to be subnets and one is going to be security groups. I'm not interested in security groups just yet. We'll see that in a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and do the subnet ones. Okay, so subnets. How do we get the subnets that we want? So this is our application server, which means we're going to assume that it will be publicly accessible to the internet. So that means I want to assign to one of my public subnets that has the internet gateway on it. So module.vpc, this VPC module is going to give us some information, right? So the VPC has outputs defined. So one is the VPC public subnets. And remember, that's going to give us a map in the form of subnet ID for a key and the value is going to be the IP address range. So we're actually going to use this module output here. So we're going to say module.vpc and from our outputs that we defined, give me the one called VPC public subnets. Now, this is a not exactly what we want, right? Because what we want is a list of strings. So example, we want subnet ID one, two, three, four, subnet ID five, six, seven, eight. We want a list of strings like this. Now, VPC public subnets here is going to give us not exactly that. It's going to give us a map, not a list. So we want to create a list of subnet IDs from this map. In order to do that, we can simply use the keys function within Terraform, which is going to give us the keys of the, this map giving it to us from the VPC public subnets variable from the output. And the keys, of course, are what we want, right? Because they're the subnet IDs that we want. So heading back over here, we're going to get the keys of that VPC public subnets output from that module, and that will be a list of strings, a list of subnet IDs. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this a bit, and I'm going to put that down here for the EC2 workers. So this case is going to be VPC private subnets, and we're going to ignore security groups for now. Let's go ahead and do a Terraform plan, and we'll see if this yells at me or not. Okay, fail to instantiate provider uh, random. So we need to do a Terraform init in order to tell that we have a new uh, provider that, we've, that we technically have asked for by using that random shuffle resource. And that works. So now we can do a Terraform plan. Okay, let's go ahead and put this up. 28 to add, zero to change, zero to destroy, which means I had no infrastructure existing, as I stated before. And we can just go ahead and see what this wants to add. I've scrolled up a bit and we see our module EC2 worker random shuffle subnets will be created as a resource. Again, it's kind of a hack. The result counts going to be one. What it's going to return is not known until you run it. If we head on up to one of our servers here, our EC2 worker AWS instance Cloudcast web server, um, this is the EC2 worker one, right? So it's actually a worker one that's going to be in the private network. We'll see the subnet ID is known after apply. So it's not going to know ahead of time here. So let's go ahead and apply this and see what happens. Look at our plan. I'll hit yes. Okay, so this has completed. Let's head on over to our console and see what we have. First, our VPC has two VPCs, which is good because before we had one. And we have some new subnets. Let's go by name here so we can see our Cloudcast staging subnets. And our route tables, we should have two new route tables. And these ones that have a name are the new ones we created. Our new VPC has a default route table, and then we created two new route tables on top of that. And we can see there's three subnets in each. If we click on one and see the routes, we'll see that one has our NAT gateway routes, and one has a route for internet gateway. That's good. Let's head on over to EC2 and see if our servers got made. Three servers, so that's good. Cloud Class Web is not part of the ones we just defined here. Okay, so I have something we want to clean up. Um, these are both named Cloudcast Staging Web, except one is Web and one is Worker. So it's a little confusing. That's something to clean up with our tags. Our CR Instance Summary, we have another thing to clean up. They both have elastic IP addresses because that's what's defined in our module. But only one of these is going to be meant to serve public traffic. So this one, I believe, is the public one. It has an EIP, and it's in the subnet meant for public traffic. So this is in the subnet that allow access uh, to public traffic. We have an EIP associated also with our worker server, our misnamed worker server, but it's in a private subnet, right? Subnet down here is Cloudcast Staging Private. So it has a NAT gateway. The outside internet can't communicate with it. So our IP address here is essentially useless. So the fact that we have an EIP on this worker server is useless and actually costs us money. Okay, so if I actually go to these IP addresses um, over here in instance summary, it also will not work. And this will just time out eventually. And that is because if we go to security, we don't have any security groups assigned except for the default. 
and the default one only allows inbound traffic from itself, essentially from other servers inside of that same security group. So this doesn't allow any inbound traffic from the outside internet based on security groups. So that's another thing to clean up. So we have uh, everything set up and it's getting created as we want, except we have a few issues to fix up. Once again, that was the fact that these are both named the same thing. So our module for EC2 doesn't give us the ability to differentiate our servers enough, right? They're both called web, for example, that's hard coded. They both have elastic IP addresses and we don't want that in both cases. And we don't have any security groups that we've created to allow the proper blocking and allowing of the traffic that we want into these servers. So we'll see that in the next video.